inside at 10 10. Hand off to Charles, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Andy Spiva, number 50. Very much in evidence along with Joe Gallagher. I pick up uh, Andy uh, Spiva right here. And what, watch him coming up through here now. Uh, Spiva, number 50, number 50. Makes a great defensive play here. He plugged in. He, he came hit the from man the right at the line of scrimmage, and there's no gain. Makes a second down on 10. He came from outside left. He read that play well. Here's Shara rolling. Looks for Henry. Going to run it. Down to the 28-yard line. And he is run down by Steve Poole, the middle linebacker from Oglethorpe, Oglethorpe, Georgia. Story on the fumbles reflected there. He had Wally Henry open, but was reluctant to let it go. These Tennessee linebackers have great range. Uh, Walter, Poole, Spiva, all have done a fine job of covering the wide plays and uh, also have been effective on a lot of dives. We look into the huddle as Charlotte calls the signal. Tennessee's always had great linebackers. Newmark, Emmanuel, he go on and on and on and on. Charlotte turns, he's gonna throw. He's looking for Anderson, goes for the short man, and it is incomplete, intended for Wally Henry. On a little bit behind him. It was a well executed play, uh, and it should have been a, a completion there, but it's just a little behind, and uh, Henry couldn't quite hold on to it, but, uh, and it nearly bounced into the hands of a Tennessee defender. Scoreboard reflects the 6 09 to play in the third quarter and 10 10 tie. As the UCLA Bruins come up now with a fourth down and about five yards to go, they've got to go to the Tennessee 24 yard line for the first down. They're going to go instead for three points. It's 45 yards. Field goal effort by Brett White. He had that range in the pregame drills, but he does not get that one. He had enough on the ball, but it slides off to the right wide, and Tennessee Holes takes over first down at the 20. UCLA had a lot of momentum going. Their, their passing game has improved the second half. Nelco. After lots of time and lots of miles, you get to know your car. Delco. You want it to be trouble free no matter where you are. Delco. To keep your car trouble-free, see your local Delco dealer at tune-up time. Quality Delco tune-up parts to help keep your car running efficiently. Well, the more you know, Delco, the more you want Delco, Delco, the more you know, the more you want Delco. I used to shave like a barbarian, hacking and cutting my face. Then Chick introduced the civilized shave, Super 2. The twin blade cartridge with Teflon coating. Now I can shave clothes, but say, even with a track to handle, Teflon coats the edge of each Super 2 blade. For a close, safe, civilized shave, try a chic Super 2 cartridge. Because what are we, barbarians? Well, the issue is very much in doubt here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Between Tennessee and UCLA as the Bruins come up, in defensive alignment, Tennessee to the attack now with Pat Ryan, the sophomore quarterback from Oklahoma City. Back to throw, whipped from the sidelines, Morgan on a wide receiver screen. He's running up the middle of the field. He's breaking into the clear. And he is finally run down at the 40-yard line, and for a moment I thought he might, might go. This uh, very well-executed quick screen, as we call it, is uh, where the linemen come out there right at the snap of the ball, and uh, they try to pick up people to help. Now watch, you see Holloway or Morgan get that ball, and then he picks up his blockers, does a great job of cutting back, and looks like he might break loose, but he's caught from behind. Got a great block from the center, Paul Johnson, to spring him into the secondary. First down, Tennessee, their own 40-yard line. We're even at 10. Here's Ryan holding the ball, turning inside, and the Bruins get him at the Tennessee 43-yard line. Clock running here in the third quarter at 5.20. As we said, the issue is in doubt here. One has to look ahead to Monday night at 9 Eastern time as Notre Dame's defending champions take on Georgia Tech. Of course, Bob Devaney, Pepper Rogers prepared a special surprise for your Nebraska Cornhuskers a couple of seasons ago. And, of course, Pepper would do it and love to do it again on Monday night against Notre Dame. We'll have it for you at 9 Eastern time. And Daryl Royals joins us over most of these ABC stations as our expert commentator. 
It is second down and seven yards to go for Tennessee at their own 43. Ryan pops it up into the air and is dropped, intended for his tight end, Tommy West. There's the pop play that uh, Dick Vermeil has in his playbook. Uh, this is a real clear fake to the dive back and to straighten up and hit the tight end. Uh, it was just a little off target here, but I, I feel that Ryan is gaining a little confidence again where he lost it. He had some troubles down there, but I think he's gaining a little confidence in that uh, pass play to Morgan. Got him started, and uh, if he can move him this time, why we might see Tennessee getting down in their scoring position, but he's got to get this first down. And he's got third and long, third down and seven from his 43. He's going to put it up. You heard the Bruins yell pass. He hits this man. He thrilled him at the UCLA 46-yard line. He caught that ball in a crowd. It's a hook pass in there. Real well thrown ball. Okay. Tommy West, the tight end, comes up with a clutch grab for Tennessee with 4.35 to play in the third quarter, and the Volunteers have it. First down at the UCLA 46-yard line. Steve Cohn, the offensive guard, for the University of Tennessee, taken off the field. He's been shaken up. Ryan turns, keeps the ball, pitches the ball wide. And Dale Curry levels Eddie Lawson, number 24. On Cone's injury, here's Jim Lampley. The injured player for Tennessee is offensive guard Steve Cohn. At first, it seemed it may be lightning striking twice in the same place. They worked on a shoulder for about three or four minutes, but Cone is up. He's moving his arm around, and he doesn't appear to be seriously hurt. Keith? All right, Jim, it'll be second down for Tennessee now. The ball is at the UCLA 42-yard line, second down and six. Eddie Lawson, number 24, from Maitland, Florida, is in there. Cliff Frazier, big defensive end, flowing with a play. Dale Fair gets wide, gets a good block. They put a good block on Frazier, and he's down to the 35-yard line, and that's the first down for Tennessee. This is one of the few times that the option play worked to the wide side of the formation, the side where the flanker was. At that time, they got out around, and it was a good gain on the play. Now, during the early going of this quarter, it was all UCLA, but suddenly, resourceful Tennessee is pounding back and mounting a drive. Again. Oh, Tennessee, I believe, recovered. I think one of the offensive linemen caught it on the fly. I'm not sure who it was. I think it was number 64. At least it looked like it was 64 that came up with it. Keith Autry came up with it. And here's the big guy, number 69, that caused it. Let me hear you pronounce his name, Bob. All right, here, it's Frank. Frank, Frank <laughs> makes a great play here, uh, tearing the ball loose, and uh, the Tennessee was fortunate recovering that, and they still have this opportunity now with second and ten. From the 35-yard line, line straight back to pass. A lot of time. Now they get to the ball again. again, and UCLA's got the ball. They're not so lucky that time. They it's Cliff Frazier, the big junior college transfer from St. Louis, Missouri, who came in and messed up the play. And I noticed Ryan has carried that ball out there quite a bit from his body, and they're reaching in there, slapping it loose from him. So it turns over again. So you saw him, I'm sure, on our pregame program. As we've noted many times before, a guy this size can sing all he wants. I'll read all the poetry he wants, but he can play football like that. 48-yard line, UCLA, first down, their own 48. Charla hands the ball off to Charlie Schumann, the fullback, and he doesn't get much, a couple of yards. You know, one of the reasons that you see more fumbles uh, early in the season in this beer offense is there's so many decisions for the quarterback to make, whether he gives the ball to the dive back and whether he keeps it or pitches, and he's got to make the right decision at the right time and then execute properly. And uh, you're going to see mistakes early in the year with these teams. Second down play goes into the middle on second down and eight. And there certainly isn't much room there. In fact, there's a loss on that play of about a half a yard. Schumann, number 36. 
57 in that Tennessee defense is Ron McCartney, a big junior out of Charleston, West Virginia. He's been very obvious. Number 26 breaking out of there is Jim Watts, the left quarterback. Tennessee has lost three out of seven fumbles today. UCLA has lost three out of five fumbles. We've had a total of 12. But Johnny Shara has not had a bad day at all, has he? He's a tough little guy. The only quarterback in the country who returned punch last year. Throws a bullet. He's got his man. Blamire, the tight end. Blamire is quick. He's big. He's strong. He muscles for about five yards down to the 21-yard line after contact had been made. And Ernie Ward, the junior out of Memphis, finally brought him down. A real fine block by the flanker there coming back in there that uh, got him the extra yards. Wally Henry, number eight. He's uh, with Monaghan. That was Henry, the little guy, 5'8", 160 from San Diego. 21-yard line, first down, UCLA. 29-yard pickup on the play, and the Bruin folks from the West Coast are happy. <laughs> Linebackers with Doggin. They guessed wrong as Shara rolls, and he's run out of bounds. That's the second time he's made hefty contact with that wire fence over the other side of the field, but not quite as hard that time. Look at that. Total that up. My arithmetic is not that advanced, but that's about a half a mile. Shira that time wisely chose to keep that ball. He, he gained about four yards on it. Uh, he's got possession, got him in good field position. He's in the four down area. Second down and a long six. Charles with the setbacks in the wire to the right hand to over to the left side. And Tennessee read the play right. And there isn't much room. Up in the stands, uh, the UCLA folks, let's find Don Tollison. Yeah, I'm standing here with the parents of Cliff Frazier, UCLA's fine defensive tackle. Mr. Frazier, how do you think your son's doing so far today? Well, I think he's doing all right. He's been having a little problem with his back, but I think he'll be okay. Mrs. Frazier, you glad your son went to UCLA? Oh, very happy. Very happy about that. Dear, you uh, started your son on his singing career, I understand. Is that right? Right, right. Right from church. Okay. Did you think UCLA would come back today? I, I'm hoping that they will. In fact, I've got a great confidence that uh, they're going to win this game. Now we're going to the air. Throws. It is in and out of the hands of Playmeyer. His tight end. He, Sarah, threw that ball very well. He drilled it. Mike Mock, number 10, is down. In fact, two volunteers are down on the play. Hard collision down there as Mock, number 10, is really shaken up. He's the free safety and Jim Watts, number 26, who is the cornerback. And that pass was drilled right between them. And Blamire just simply couldn't hold it. So it's UCLA's ball. Fourth down. The ball is just short of the 15-yard line, and time is out for attention to these players. Brett White figures to get the ball here, the UCLA place kicker. He does all of the kicking for them. He carries three pairs of shoes when he's working around with a square toe and a regular toe and all that kind of stuff. So let's go back to the collision and see how it happened. Comments of Bob Devaney. All right, here you, you see uh, the pass play thrown right in between uh, Watts uh, there and, and Ward down there in the bottom of the screen. And there was a collision, and both players are being removed from the field. And this hurts, this hurts UCLA, or I mean hurts Tennessee, because they're good defensive players. There's Congress Holloway coming back into the stadium. He's been to the hospital, he's been x-rayed, and there is obviously nothing broken. So Holloway comes back in, but look at his colleagues as uh, Jim War Watts and uh, Mike Mock are both being helped off the field. So now it is fourth down. Here is the kick by Brett White from the 22-yard line. It is no good. A 32-yard try on the field goal for UCLA, and all kinds of things are happening. As Tennessee is able to hold UCLA and keep them from scoring, and the artful Dodger comes running into the stadium at the most propitious time. So let's see if that has some effect on the emotion of the Tennessee football team, and Holloway is going onto the field. So Holloway back in, and 
everybody in the stadium associated with the orange and white are standing and cheering and let's see what the little guy from Huntsville, Alabama can do. On first down and 10 for Tennessee at the 20-yard line, the score is tied 10. He throws the ball. His arm is all right. He throws it to Morgan on that same hip screen play. He's out at the 33-yard line for a first down. It's a great lift for Tennessee. That's a biggest psychological factor in the game. With Holloway returning after it been pretty definite that he was through for the day being in the hospital, and now he's back out of the hospital throwing that football. Larry Satterfield, number 65, big tackle from Maryville, Tennessee. Threw a big, big block that time. Took two Bruins out of that play. Good for the 15 yards in the first down. We're even at 10-10 with the clock running down. The third quarter's about gone. He does not get the playoff. The third quarter has expired here at Naylor Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's been a dandy. The score, Tennessee, 10. The UCLA Bruins, 10, and we've got 15 minutes to go. Ryder rents trucks. All kinds of trucks. GMC tractors, trailers, refrigerated trucks, walk-ins, stakes, small Chevy vans. So if you need trucks for a day, a month, a year, over two seconds. Remember, Ryder rents trucks. We ask some people on the street to explain compound interest. After you get a certain amount, then you get compound. Do you have another question? <laughs> no, that's the only question. Oh, would you tell me? Instead of embarrassing me like this, did I, did I walk up and embarrass you? No. <laughs> All right. You think of it, I'm not too sure. Compound interest can be confusing. It's really just interest on interest. In a savings account at your Savings and Loan Association, your return can be substantial. It's absolutely marvelous. Savages starring Andy Griffith on the Wednesday movie of the week. We're the bank with you to thank for keeping on the ground. When we work together, the plus in us will show. We still believe in you and me because people make us. Like their parents and grandparents before them, Edith Darnell and her husband Claude shear their own sheep for the wool Edith weaves and sells in her shop. I enjoy weaving and takes her while to hit the best. At JFG, we feel the same way about the quality of our coffee. That's why we select and blend only the highest grade coffee beans to get the taste we like in this part of the country. The taste you'll find in every cup of JFG special coffee. With us, quality is a tradition. You're watching WTVK, Channel 26 in Knoxville, and we really appreciate it. Bill from the Goodyear Cliff as Tennessee comes up. First down at the 32-yard line. Convict Holloway is back in the ball game. He left in the middle of the first quarter with an injured shoulder. He gets away from one man. He pitches wide to his tailback Gale. And he's run down. Or perhaps a yard loss by Herschel Ramsey, the safety for UCLA out of Pasadena, California. Along the front for Tennessee, Morgan, number 21, your wide receiver. Yeah, Six to five is side of field. Incidentally, Six on this play, is uh, Tennessee was given double coverage by UCLA on the corners there, and it made it difficult to run an option play. He just barely got his shirt tail loose there, didn't he? Yeah. That big Autry up there, Bob, is only a freshman, number 64. I've been watching him, and he's really played himself a fine football game. Well, this, this was one that just happened. Uh, Holloway was looking for a receiver here, couldn't find anybody, and somehow the middle guard, uh, Norfleet, uh, ran around the head and left an opening there as the linebackers backed out of there, and Holloway got about three yards. Now, looking at your uh, time of possession as we... Recount the third quarter statistics for you. Time of possession remains very even. It's at, uh, 550 yards in the ball game by both teams. Third down. Third down and seven yards to go for Tennessee from just outside the 35. And Holloway's going to pump it up. Good. And there's that pop play as it came to Tommy West. 
the tight end. And that time, West lined up on the left side. Right. West, uh, the line flip-flops. Incidentally, Tennessee offensive line flip-flops. Uh, they have a strong side and a weak side in each play. So sometimes the uh, certain tackles are on one side, and the next time they'll line up on the other side. The same with the tight end and the uh, flanker. All right, that gives Tennessee a first down. Up on the volunteer 48-yard line. Eight to fair. They throw it off to Morgan. It's a lateral pass, it looked to me like. Nope, they call it an incomplete pass. It's real close to a lateral pass, oh. I tell you that. I'd like to see that one again, Coach. Yeah, that, that was real mighty close. close. All right, what about the status of those two Tennessee backs that were shaken? Let's go to Jim. The more seriously injured of the two Tennessee defensive backs is Watts. He has a cheekbone injury, a cut. He may play, but he'll need another headgear. His helmet was apparently broken. Mark was shaken up, but he can play. Keith? Second down and 10 yards to go. 48-yard line, Tennessee. Double coverage again by UCLA. Give it a gale to tailback. Ramsey, number one, led the tacklers for the Bruins. It's tough to run the pitch into that where uh, UCLA has uh, a defensive man right out on the wide receiver on both sides, and when they start the option play, he just stands there and waits for the pitch. I get the feeling, too, that number 90 in white for UCLA, that's Big Bob Crawford from Silmar, California, has been getting a little bit tougher on that defensive right end position over there. Perhaps to get in there, pick up confidence, and read a little better. Third down. And eight yards to go. Holloway reverses his field, gets away in the backfield. Now he's dropped on the 45-yard line, and he is run down by Frank Manu Maleuna. Frank oh. did a great job, he did a great job, and, and this is one of the times when I know that Coach kind of hates to see that quarterback scramble when he gives too much ground, as Holloway did there. All right, it's fourth down and a kick coming up by Claybo, and he hangs it nicely, and a fair catch is called for the UCLA Bruins back at the 19-yard line, 34 yards on the punt. Monday night at 9 Eastern time from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia Tech and Notre Dame. taking you for a ride as a police car starts its everyday tour of duty. This your first trip in a police car? Well, let me tell you, a police car doesn't get treated like an ordinary car. We really push the engine around. Stop and start in all kinds of weather. I guess that's the part you'd like to talk about, the Havilland oil part. Yeah, well, it's true. A fleet of our police cars was put on Havilland and altogether logged more than one million miles with no trouble. And we give an engine plenty of reason to give us trouble. You know, sometimes we have to hit high speeds from zero in just a few seconds. And when I finish eight hours, the next man takes over with the same car. You have to be a pretty good motor oil to take that kind of pushing around. 247 1180 at exit 18. Haviland Super Premium. All temperature motor oil from Texaco. State police proven for over one million trouble-free miles. minutes to play in a football game. 10-10 ball game. UCLA has it at their own 19-yard line. First down. John Shaw has gone all the way. Gives that ball off to Zidi. And he is out to the 30-yard line. He should have a first down as he exploded over the right side and picked up 12 yards on the play. Uh, UCLA is trying to stick to their game plan. They're running that ball a lot. But I think that uh, it's going to be difficult for either team to mount, mount an 80-yard drive. They either got to do it on a few quick plays or a long pass, or one team or the other has got to get a break here. First down, UCLA, Charlotte turns, and that ball off up the middle to Russell Charles, and Charles pounds through there to the 37-yard line before Andy Spiva, number 50, brings him down. Uh, here you watch this five, uh, number 50, who's played a great football game here. And watch him come across here now and make the play. And look like for a moment like they're going to break loose on that play. Ball is at the 47-yard line, second down. Uh, the 37-yard line, excuse me, second down. Scarra hands it off to Zavi. He keeps wiggling and squirming and gets it across the 40, and he's very close to a first down. Zaby, Z-A-B-Y, 5'9", 191-pound sophomore from Pico Rivera. 
and they'll bring the chains on. And while they are doing that, let me remind you about the Pacific 8 Conference and the pride it has in the caliber of its football. Even prouder, though, that its member universities have well-rounded competitive athletic programs in so many sports. The Pac-8 wins each year more national titles in more sports than any other conference in the country. Well, there it is. First down for UCLA. Link to the ball. And there's two first downs in a row here now. And uh, we'll see if UCLA can sustain this drive. Nobody has really sustained the drive uh, to a touchdown conclusion yet. Ball is on the 41-yard line. As you saw the numbers that Johnny Ferris put away this afternoon. Most impressive debut as the starting quarterback for UCLA. He hands that ball off to that left halfback, and he just runs that straight dive play ahead. And he moves it from the 41 up to the 45-yard line. Don't forget, immediately following today's football game from Knoxville between UCLA and Tennessee, ABC will bring you the Provincial College School Board, Chris Schenkel and Dave Diles to bring you up to date on all the stories in football and recapping the key action. Provincial College School Board following today's game over most of these ABC stations. Second down, six yards to go, UCLA, their own 45. This time he hands the ball to Zibi. Tennessee plugged their linebackers that time, and they just happened to hit right up in there where the handoff was. And here we'll see it on a replay. Number 34, Hank Walter, coming into this hole. Right at the snap, he plugs, and he meets the play there. A real fine defensive play, and puts the pressure now. It's got uh, UCLA in a situation where they've got to come up with the big play here. Third down and three. Art Kuhn is over the ball. Dara throws it. Good. Pass to Anderson. First down, UCLA. All right, now, since the beginning of the uh, second quarter, UCLA has been able to roll out and hit. Now, you see him hitting Anderson in one of these rollouts here. Shira hitting him. Anderson runs a fine pattern and makes a great catch there. This, this Anderson's a fine receiver. He was not a real heralded receiver uh, prior to the start of this game, but he's going to be before the season's over. Gained 13 yards on the play, just inside the 40-yard line. Anderson's caught five passes for 64 yards. Threw it out and first down, and the handoff... Shara faking very well and said, whoa, you're supposed to take it. Bang, down he went. Down with the UCLA Rooters. Here's Don. Well, I think I'm with the Tennessee Rooters down here, and perhaps most importantly of all, a lot of young people are having a lot of fun here today. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Do you think Tennessee's going to go on and win this ballgame now that Holloway's back in here? Yeah. How many of you here are Tennessee Rooters, huh? Back to you, Keith. All right, Don, I'll get you located right yet. Ball is at the 39-yard line, 38-yard line, as Charlotte rolls out to the left side, trying to get away, and he's skirt tail. Another real fine defensive play by uh, number 35. Uh, real fine defensive play. Good pursuit. So now looking to the field, it is third down for the UCLA Bruins. The football is at the 38-yard line of Tennessee. They've got to go just inside the 30 to get a first down. The clock is running, and we're coming up on eight minutes to play in a ball game. And the score is still tied at 10-10. Shara has the ball. Going to throw. Does. Wide open. It's Wally Henry. He fumbles. He gets it back. On the 15-yard line. The only thing else that can happen it's in this ball game is... It's a real fine pass route run by Henry, and it's a well-executed pass play. This Shire is standing in there and throwing that ball uh, from a drop back better than I think anybody thought he could throw it. And here he hits Henry, a perfect pass right here. Henry takes it, makes a couple of fine moves, and as he's hit down here, the ball pops loose right now. And it could have gone the other way, but Henry gets on the football, and UCLA is in scoring position. At the 15, Monaghan replaces Henry in a wide receiver position. Shara hands the ball off. 
to the right side half back. David Page brings him down. The clock is running. Carl Zabe and uh, Bobby Farrell are the setbacks for UCLA now as Dick Vermeil continues to shuffle his running backs. He gained two yards on the play. Second down and eight yards to go from the 13. Well, I was about to say a while ago, Bob, is the only thing left to happen in the ball game is for the stadium to come loose and start floating down the river. We've got a lot of excitement here. It's a real interesting ball game for everyone. Quite the tackle on the left side. Move before the snap. And Tennessee runs down the ball carrier. Farrell as he gets to about the 14-yard line. Uh, this is the poise that Coach Vermeil was talking about at the halftime. He said his team had to show poise, and this lack of poise right here where they jumped the gun uh, could really cost them down here. They're down scoring territory, and now they're back. They've lost five yards here, and it makes it tougher down here. They, they, they can't get out of field goal range. They've got to keep that ball in field goal range, uh, whatever they do down here, so they have a chance to get on the board again. Tennessee will take the play. They want to use up that down. At 300 yards now for John Shara. He's very much in the contest for the offensive player of the ball game, isn't he? Carroll, <laughs> number 32. One of the setbacks for UCLA. Tyler is the other. Shara's pass into the end zone. Touchdown! Beautiful pass. What a great catch by Anderson. And so the UCLA Bruins start at the 19-yard line and take it down the field, and let's take another look at Anderson. Uh, this is a tough pass to catch, this slant-in pass. It's a real good pattern. He slants in and is perfectly thrown. He's hit right as he catches it, but holds on to the football. It was a great play by Shira and also by Anderson. You know, John Murdick, number 27 for Tennessee, couldn't have played it the better. He hit him just the right time, but a little low, I guess, maybe. Didn't separate him from the ball. Here's Brett White in for the extra point try as UCLA gets the lead. And White makes it. A 17-10 ball game as the Bruins go 81 yards in 12 plays and a look again at the touchdown. All right, here you see Anderson cutting the ball. And he takes the pass. He's hit right there. Murdoch gets him. A great catch. We want to sell cars. You want to save money. It's that simple. Right now, many Chevy dealers are featuring year-end savings on 74 Vegas they have in stock. Vega the sporty, economical little car that now makes more sense than ever. Chevrolet wants to sell cars. You want to save money. That's why Chevrolet's year-end savings plan makes sense for America. We want to sell cars. You want to save money. It's that simple. Right now, many Chevy dealers are featuring year-end savings on 74 Novas they have in stock. Nova, Chevy's sensible compact. Chevrolet wants to sell cars. You want to save money. That's why Chevrolet's year-end savings plan makes sense for America. Get off. Paul Carruthers, number 32, a senior from Lafayette, Georgia. And number 21, Stanley Morgan, a sophomore from Easley, South Carolina. Are the deep men for the orange and white of Tennessee, trailing 17 to 10 as Brett White, number 34, will kick it off for UCLA with six minutes and 29 seconds to play in the football game. White hit all of it that time. He drives Carruthers deep into the end zone, and there will be no run back of that one. So while they mark it off, let's have another look at the touchdown play for UCLA. Here's the touchdown that could be the winning touchdown of the ball game here unless uh, Tennessee can mount a drive. A real well-executed pattern by Norm Anderson, who's done a great job, and this was probably the most crucial catch that he's made today, and I think it's about his sixth or seventh catch. Holloway is back on the field. When the see, Holloway's played nine minutes in the ball game. Pat Ryan played 24 minutes under Holloway. The Volunteers picked up 103 yards without him, uh, 144 yards without him, 103 yards. So no question, he is their leader. And he turns, and he gives the football away to the running back slanting over the other, the left side. That's Carruthers, number 32, the senior, running back in the backfield. And Fulton Kuykendall, a senior for UCLA from Vallejo, California, made the tackle. 
Tennessee has time if they can just hold on to the football and get a consistent drive going or else come up with a big play. The Rutherford's 32, Gales 43 for Tennessee, the setbacks. Double coverage again. Taking a mighty long time to get the play off, but he does it. He gives the ball to the others, and ball takes it out to about the 29-yard line. And he may have juggled the ball. It may have even come loose. UCLA arguing that it was loose, but what's the man in the striped shirts? They'll tell us. That tells you all you need to know. It's third down. Tennessee keeps the ball. Becoming now precious for Tennessee. Morgan is back in the lineup replacing Seaver, the wide receiver for the ball. UCLA with five men up front. Holloway gets past the end, turns it up to the 35 yard line. And that's enough for a Tennessee first down. I would guess that that play come in from the bench there. Uh, instead of hitting into the line, where he picked into the line, ran a very fine option play. And Cliff Frazier, number 76, hobbles off the field for UCLA. Didn't look serious, but he's put in a pretty rough afternoon over there. Kukalika, number 75, also is out. Pat Sweetland is the other defensive man at that tackle position. Back to throw, rolling option on the first down play. He gets the ball away to the man coming out of the backfield. And Dale Fair, the fullback, is in UCLA country at the Bruins' 47-yard line. Dale Fair, Frank Manu Malu Edu, or Malu Udo. I'll get it right yet. He made the tackle along with John Donoski. And there was a well-executed, real-out pass, and uh, Holloway lofted the ball over a defender's head there and put it right into Fair's hands. All right, it's first down, Tennessee. And the balls are trying to come back. With Fair and Gales behind. Holloway still has the ball. And number 69, Big Frank, is in to slow him up. And the Bruin defensive line backers and backs came up. And there's Frazier on the bench, getting some treatment on what appears to be an ankle. Second down and nine yards to go for Tennessee at the UCLA 46. Whatever it is that Cliff has is hurting him. It might be a friend. That you can rub out, but it looks to me like they're working on the ankle. And now time is called by UCLA. So Conrich Holloway goes to the sidelines to talk to his coach, Bill Battle. We have three minutes and 34 seconds to play. UCLA 17, Tennessee 10. You've seen commercials about steel-belted radial tires giving better gas mileage than non-radial tires. Well, it's true. But the Goodyear Steel Guard radial gives better gas mileage and Goodyear's five-guard protection. We'll show you what we mean. Goodyear Steel Guard radial tires have special decoupling grooves to help keep the tread firmly on the road. Sidewall stabilizers for positive steering response. Polyester cord body to absorb shocks. Double steel belts give strength in the tread area. And the Goodyear Steel Guard radial has a computer designed tread that really grips even when it's wet. So remember, when you're thinking about buying new tires, you can get better gas mileage and five guards to help protect you with the Steel Guard radial, only from Goodyear. Three minutes and 34 seconds to play in a ball game. UCLA leading 17 to 10. Here at Baylor Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Second down and nine yards to go for Tennessee at the UCLA 46 yard line. Holloway. Throws. Pass incomplete. Thrown behind the intended receiver. Holloway was going to his tight end that time. A 
the wide receiver was covered very well there, the double coverage, and uh, Ottawa threw the ball behind the receiver. It might have been a completion, but he was pretty well covered. Along the defensive front now for UCLA, you've got Pat Sweetland, 67, Gene Settles, 59, at an inside linebacking position. Greg Norfleet's gone most of the way at the, at the nose guard spot. Tom Waddell and Terry Tortolo are both in there in the defensive right end. This big Bob Crawford on third down and nine yards to go. Holloway, he has daylight, but he throws the ball, and it is complete for Morgan. He's down on the 13-yard line, the 12-yard line. This is a great play uh, by Morgan after he caught the ball. He was hit just about the time he caught it. And, and then he uh, held on to the football. 32 yards completion. But it looks like Morgan's hurt down there now. He's down in the ground. He indeed is down. He may have just had the wind knocked out of him because he was really crunched by a couple of Bruins when they suddenly realized they had been had. Matt Pale was the man who really laid it on him. You know... I think that uh, if Tennessee can score here, and they're moving that ball real well now, you're going to have the decision by the coach whether to go for the two or not, for the two points. 5, 26, 8, 20. There's a better way. Get Texas Instruments 2500 Calculator. It instantly adds, subtracts, multiplies, divides. Automatically puts the decimal points where they belong. Has a constant to simplify repetitive calculations. And you can afford it. So you'll always have the right answers right away. Texas Instruments. Dependable quality calculators for home, school, business, science, you. Those times that call for nothing less than a tipperillo. Sure, it tastes great, but it looks great too. It makes everything else you do look a little better. Tipperillo. It makes everything else you do look a little better. minutes and 19 seconds to play in a ball game. Tennessee first down on the UCLA 12-yard line. Morgan came off the field under his own power. Wobbling some, but he made it. Holloway on a roll to the right. He has blocking. He's got his head down and headed for six. He's in there! A great effort by Holloway there. The last-minute effort where he went over the top of uh, a blocker and two blockers into the end zone. It was just a real fine play. This is interesting. Now we're going to find out pretty quick. He's got three minutes left. Uh, he may go for one. He looks like he's going for one unless they fake off the kick. Then he, you might see an onside kick here. I think uh, Bill Battles must figure well with three minutes. We got a chance to get the ball back again. And it's a tough three yards. That three yards you go for the two points is the toughest three yards in football. But remember, though, Townsend is in kicking posture. Holloway is the holder. He could do it, but they knock it through, and they go for the one. And you've got a tie ball game at 17-17 with three minutes, 11 seconds to play in the ball game. 80 yards and eight plays. And let's take another look at Mr. Holloway. Uh, Conrad Holloway on this play here is looking for a receiver, but he wisely decides to run. You can see his speed there and that great extra effort. He was hit on the goal line, uh, and I think he was hit by this middle guard, Norfleet, that got all the way over there, who's played, incidentally, a great defensive football game. He got the great block from his tailback, Mike Quayle, that gave him that burst or the room to turn it on and pull his way in. So, Tennessee used three minutes and 18 seconds to score. Ricky Townsend, with his bare foot hanging out, is up there to nail it. And the question here, does he go for the onside kick and possibly give UCLA good field position? Russell Charles and Wally Henry are the deep men for the Bruins right there. Uh, tennis, Tennessee, or uh, UCLA is not playing for the onside kick, and he goes deep. It goes to Charles a yard deep in the end zone. The wedge is not effective. He gets back to the 19-yard line, and that's all. A 20-yard return. Now, what about Stanley Morgan? Jim Emphrey has the story. Stanley Morgan is okay. He, he will be back in the ball game if and when Tennessee gets the football again. Condridge Holloway came off limping a little bit. Seems that his knee was slightly hurt. They worked on it a moment. He is back up and walking around. 
Right call at the 20-yard line for UCLA, their own 20. The nose of the ball is touching that yard stripe. With three minutes and five seconds to play, will we have one like this in Atlanta Monday night? Well, join us over most of these ABC stations at 9 Eastern time for Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. John Shara, he'll keep this one. He's got room on the sidelines, and he runs it out past the 30-yard line. He's out to about the 32-yard line for a first down. What about Cliff Frazier, the other side of the field, and Don Tellison? Cliff, Cliff Frazier has a sprained left ankle. He's having difficulty pushing off that ankle, but he says he may go back in if Tennessee gets possession of the ball back. All right, Don. First down, UCLA, their own 32-yard line, and time becomes the factor. We're at 2.59 to go. Russ Williams is in, replacing Hank Walker in the Tennessee linebacking core. Dara hands the ball off to Charlie Schumann. There is no room. You should see a greatly inspired Tennessee defense here. They've got to get that ball back. They've got to force UCLA to punt within this next series. They, they've got to get the punt to get the ball back. They should be really going after him here. Andy Spiva, a whale of a ball game today, was involved in leading that last defensive surge for Tennessee. Momentum a yard. 33-yard line. Second down. Nine for the Bruins. He's up. He gets across that 40, and he goes almost to the 45-yard line. Good running. He's at the 43. You know, he's been able to get out around uh, on the rollout. He's been able to get out around the Tennessee ends all day with that option to pass or run. That time, he wisely used the run option, and uh, he's once more got the UCLA team moving and uh, first down, and, uh, you know, the ball game could go that other way. Tennessee may be inspired, but UCLA certainly hasn't folded their camp. Shara, 169 yards rushing, 169 yards passing. That's not too bad for an afternoon's work. We're taking it down in the last gap. 2.13 to go. Opening game of the season. Penalty flag is on the field. Russell Charles found no daylight at all as Tennessee leaped on it. Let's see what the flag is like. Credential College scoreboard with Chris Schenkel and Dave Giles immediately follows our telecast from Knoxville, Tennessee. And, of course, Monday night, it's Notre Dame and Georgia Tech at 9 Eastern time over most of these stations with Gerald Royal of the University of Texas joining us. The penalty was thrown against UCLA. And they're talking now to the Tennessee defensive captain. That's Hank Walter. And they're going to mark off five against the Bruins for offside. And that's a big five at this point with only 2.07 to play in the game. You know, Pepper Rogers has uh, taken on quite a task in his first ball game there at Georgia Tech. He's leading a real fine Notre Dame team, but I think Georgia Tech's going to play a fine ball game. I would not be surprised, because certainly Pepper Rogers is able to arouse his folks. He's proven that. First down and 15 now for UCLA at the 38-yard line, and Charles sets the throw. He's uncovered. He is in serious trouble as Pullum runs him down, but he unloads the ball, got it off to Wally Henry. And instead of suffering a 22-yard loss, he may have picked up a couple of yards. I tell you, to have that big number 70, 245 pounds of him chasing you, whew. Gain of a yard on that play. Actually, he gained more than that. He gained seven yards because they had absorbed the five-yard penalty, and the ball is now marked just shy of the 45-yard line. So let's call it second down and a short nine to go for the first down. But the clock is running at one minute and 11 seconds, and the Bruins have only one timeout remaining. Just one. Remember, they had to spend one early. Shara turns off the corner and cuts back into the middle. And he's down at the Tennessee 46-yard line, and he's got a first down for UCLA as we have 56 seconds to play in a ball game. The clock stopping to move the chain. UCLA certainly now is going to be trying to move that ball into field goal position. They've got to get about 20 more yards at least, though, before they're really in range. Pass to the sidelines is complete to Henry. Uh, this was one that stops the clock. Keep it going down the sideline, and of course, time only 43 seconds remaining. And the offensive player in today's ball game, 
defensive player. We'll announce for you in just a moment. The respective universities receiving the $1,000 scholarship donation from Chevrolet for their general scholarship fund. It does not go to the athlete, but goes rather to the scholarship fund. Now with 43 seconds to play. It's second down and three yards to go. Ashara goes to the sidelines again, and the pass is caught by Anderson for a first down at the Tennessee 33-yard line. And they only used a couple of ticks on the clock for that one. 38 seconds. 38 seconds to play in a ball game, and the man loosening up and facing the sidelines is Brett White, number 34, the place kicker for UCLA. About two more passes like that, and they're going to be in field goal range. And those kind of passes are only taking about four or five seconds to get off and complete. So UCLA can move that ball. I think Tennessee may have to play them a little tighter on that outside. All right, Henry to the left, Anderson to the right. Here's Shara rolling. The clock in motion again. Gets away from one man, gets away from two. He's got to get rid of the ball. He's given up a lot of territory. He throws it down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. And he gets no flag. No, oh, he does too. Yes, he does. They call it for intentional grounding of the ball. Now, the man standing right down here on the sidelines didn't throw the flag. The referee, I believe it was, way back upfield. This is a, this is very, very seldom called when you have an offensive or a defensive man in position to catch the ball. And there were both an offensive and a defensive man in position, but the referee must have ruled that uh, he really was just throwing it away. It's a tough call. It also is loss of down. Remember that. It'll be second down and about a half a mile. The ball is at the UCLA 49-yard line. They have to go to the Tennessee 23 for a first down. So it's second and 28. And they've almost got to go deep this time in the hopes of uh, getting a completion or an interference call uh, to get that ball in field goal range. 27 seconds to play. 27 seconds. 17-17 tie, and what a way to start a college football season. Shara stands, he throws, it is incomplete. There's a pass in the holding on the intended receiver. So, that'll give him a first down at the Tennessee 43-yard line as Tennessee held the intended receiver, Anderson. This play is definitely an interference play. He just grabbed a hold of him as he come back across there. There you see the time remaining, 22 seconds. Take a look at the interference call here. All right, here you see play uh, Anderson starting out here. He breaks across here, and there you see him being hit by the uh, cornerback and uh, knocked down, in fact. All right, it's first down, UCLA at the Tennessee 43-yard line. Sarah back to throw. Has time. Gets it off over the middle to Clay Meyer. He's got it down at the 23-yard line. It's another UCLA first down, and now Tennessee is in trouble. With 14 seconds to play in a ball game, UCLA picks up 19 yards as Charlotte goes to Clay Meyer. And just a real fine route by Clay Meyer, and he catches his ball here. It's in a crowd. There he goes. He grabs it. Real fine throw. Drew Shire made another great pass. He's, he's done a great job throwing that ball. So with only 14 seconds to play in a ball game, do you tee it up here and let your place kicker go for it? Do you run a couple of more plays? UCLA, of course. Uh, Terry, do they have a timeout remaining? They just spit it. That's all there is. They have no more times out. They've either got to throw it or kick the field goal. They well, might throw one more or else they've got to kick the field goal. There's White right there, the blonde youngster in the huddle with UCLA. He is one for three in his field goal tries. He hit one from 20 yards at the conclusion of the first half. He's so got with about the, a 37-yard field goal here if he makes it. He's yep. about 37 yards. With uh, no timeouts remaining and only 14 seconds left to play in the ball game, Dick Vermeil is not going to gamble. He's going. It's a four, it'll be a 40-yard field goal. It's pretty close to 40-yard field goal here. He's going to put it down about on the 39-yard line. So, Brett White, who does all the kicking for the UCLA Bruins, Brett White. 205-pound junior, 19 years of age, from Huntington Beach, California, has right now walked into taste perhaps the greatest pressure of his young life. 
You know, uh, UCLA broke our uh, Nebraska uh, winning streak at 23 games with a field goal right in the last part of the game from almost the same angle. A fellow by the name of Herrera, I believe, gets right. that field goal. Yep, from Herrera. And uh, it was uh, just about the same angle. It might not have been quite as far. So there is Bill Battle. There's not a thing in the world he can do about what's about to happen on the field, except play a little. Gene Playmeyer, the man who made the crucial catch, will be the man who will hold it. And they come from the hash mark. I'll let you watch it from the end zone. He missed it! You saw the ball hook a little and go wide left. And so Brett White misses a 40-yard field goal try that might have won the ball game for UCLA with only nine seconds remaining. And One more look at a moment of disappointment for him. Didn't it there, Bob? He got all of it. No, it looked, looked like he scuffed the ball a little bit there, and uh, he didn't get all the pop to it. And there's nobody in the stadium now that feels worse than this young kid, Brett White. But uh, see the big guy, uh, number 57, uh, looking at him. He's out of the corner of his eye. Ron McCartney exulting, but I'm sure at the same time feeling a pang. So it's at the 20-yard line for Tennessee now with Convich Holloway at quarterback. And nine seconds remaining to play in a football game. Holloway on a bad ankle, hobbling around, a sore arm. He throws. The pass is completed to number 81, Tom Fitzpatrick. Up on the 34-yard line, and Tennessee calls a timeout. Time on the scoreboard, however, has run out. Let's see if he was able to get it before time expired. William Love, the referee, will have to make that decision with the official timekeeper. It appears that they're going to give him a couple of more seconds to play in the game. But what an opening football game, Bob Devaney. And uh, let me say now that we are delighted to have had you with us today. And remember, immediately following our ball game, we'll have the Provincial College School Board. And Monday night at 9 Eastern time from Atlanta, Georgia, the ball game is over here in Knoxville. And we have a 17-17 tie between UCLA and Tennessee. And Monday night at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations, We'll watch Notre Dame and Georgia Tech tee it up. And that one should be just as good as this one. And I don't recall ever seeing a better opening football game. Bob Devaney, it had everything in the world in it. It had bad luck. It had good luck. It had excitement. It had great plays. It had bad plays. It had its heroes. It had its goals. We'll be right back. Hunting the African plains. And all you...